Hello and welcome. In today's video, you learn about broadband access equipment you must usually obtain from your internet service provider. You also learn about a class of devices, broadly known as internet appliances, that you can use to hook up a home network to broadband access gear, as well as when and why an internet appliance may be a worthwhile purchase. A cable modem looks something like the photo now showing on your screen. It's a small box that includes at least a cable TV or CATV connection for access to the cable company's infrastructure and the internet access it conveys. The back side of the cable modem is where the real action happens. In this schematic illustration, from right to left you see the cable connector at the far left, a USB port, an Ethernet RJ45 jack, two RJ11 phone jacks, a reset switch, and a power input for the unit's external power supply. For the most basic internet access, you'd hook up a segment of coaxial CATV cable to the leftmost connector and use either a USB or RJ45 Ethernet connection to hook up to a single computer. A DSL modem looks pretty similar to a cable modem, except that you don't use a CATV connector for the hookup to the service provider's network. Instead, you use an additional RJ45 to hook up to the provider network. This means that it's important to pay attention to the labels underneath the connectors to make sure things are hooked up properly. Things get more interesting when you have more than one PC to hook up to an internet connection, both for cable or DSL-based services. Basically, you need to add a device that can handle signals from two or more computers on your home network and also forward outbound traffic from those computers to the cable or DSL modem and forward inbound traffic from the internet to some PC on the home network. Normally, this calls for a device called a router that can handle traffic relays between the cable or DSL modem on one side and the local network on the other. Such a device also enables PCs on the home network to talk to each other as well. Let's look at the rear of this device to show you what kinds of connections it offers. From left to right, you see a group of four RJ45 Ethernet ports. This is where you can connect up to four Ethernet cables to handle four incoming home network connections. This means the device can handle at least four PCs, but because you can hook other similar devices up to the other end of the cable, you can accommodate more than that if you purchase extra equipment. The next two ports are labeled WAN2 and WAN1 and indicate that this particular device can accommodate two internet links if available, though most households will only want to pay for one. Finally, on the far right, you see the power connector for the external power supply that drives this device. As with cable and DSL modems, you can also get wired or wireless models from your provider. Please go to digitallanding.com for more information, other videos, and articles about your digital lifestyle.